We want to make materials that resist oxidation or resist corrosion. So we want to understand how, by adding small amounts of other elements, we might prevent oxidation from happening. So we, if we find an element that prevents oxidation, uh, for instance, a nickel-based superalloy, hafnium is a common element. Well, we want to know where hafnium is so that we can understand its role. So maybe we can use cheaper elements that might have play the same um, role and make alloys that are more um, accessible. Oh man, you're gonna like this. My name is Adam McFarland. Uh, I'm currently a senior and I actually switched from aerospace to material science after taking Professor Yalasov's 220 course. Uh, I, I liked it so much that I thought this is what I wanted to do. It was just an awesome blend of physics and chemistry and I thought it was great, so I switched it over. <laughs> we look at the atomic structure of materials um, using atom probe tomography that allows us to reconstruct in three dimension the atomic positions within a material. All right, uh, I'm doing atom probe tomography of vitreous ice with a manual marquee. So we take a machine called an atom probe, which is able to resolve images of the, the 3D spatial atoms in a sample and uh, put those onto computer software so we can actually analyze how the elements make up a sample that we're looking at. So the goal of my research is to eventually figure out a way to look at nanoparticles on the atomic scale. So the idea is that if we can look at ice, then eventually we'll be able to freeze nanoparticles within the ice and look at the atoms that make up the nano specimens. <laughs> so the technique itself is relatively new. The concept has been around for over 50 years, but the, t the instrument that we're using was developed over the last 10 years. So what we need to do is make very small specimens uh, so small that we can't see them. We apply an electric field uh, on the specimen and that creates an ionization event. So atoms evaporate from the specimen and we can measure the chemistry and their location and reconstruct in three dimension a uh, small volume of materials. We are looking at corrosion of a variety of materials used in the nuclear industry. Uh, so one of the things we're looking at is zirconium, which is used as a fuel cladding to encase the nuclear fuel. Uh, in the reactor, and it's, um, it's exposed to water within the reactor, so it's subject to corrosion. So we're looking at the various oxides that form uh, with zirconium to try and figure out how that corrosion process is happening and see if we can modify uh, the material at all to hopefully avoid the corrosion. So we'll take a piece of material that has been corroded or oxidized, so it has an oxide film layer on the surface. And what we're looking at is the distribution of all the elements within the, the alloy itself and within the oxide. So to understand how the oxidation process takes place. So I use corrosion in order to prepare my samples that I want to look at. So we take tungsten wire and uh, use a solution of sodium hydroxide in water and we apply a voltage to the sodium hydroxide and then to the sample and then when we put the sample in the sodium hydroxide it actually corrodes away very like layers at a time until we get a very fine point that's only about 100 nanometers or less at the top so you can barely even see it when you're looking at it but you know it's there so it is critical for students to study corrosion Corrosion is important because it's responsible for the degradation of materials and what we're looking at right now is understanding the processes by which materials degrade and how to improve the properties of materials. Through this understanding, we also can get a grasp of the physical mechanisms that are responsible for this degradation, which are this electrochemistry. And by understanding electrochemistry, we can then f flip the problem around and use it to create new batteries batteries in your computers, batteries in anything, so as power generation. So corrosion has an impact on um, all aspects of engineering, really, um, from automotive, electronics, civil engineering, um, aerospace, uh, and of course for us material science that are uh, covering all materials across the board.